Three circles. Mm -hmm. What are the three circles? Okay, and on how one, how can you make give an example how to make adapt products to make more environmentally friendly? Making an electronic blanket for Russia, yes. Yeah? So, how are you going to make it more environmentally friendly? Just putting the Russian flag makes it more environmentally friendly. Hmm? Maybe I'll try that on my car. Put on the Russian flag and it will be more environmentally friendly. Hmm? Do you understand environmentally friendly? Green? Yes, yeah, so how, how are you going to adapt your products to make it more environmentally friendly? Putting the Russian flag may make it more culturally acceptable, but we want, we're talking about the environment. It's an electric blanket, it uses electricity, so there should be one simple way to make it more environmentally friendly. One, one chi. I have difficulties about understanding environmental Environmentally friendly. Environmentally friendly means good for the environment. Ah. Do you understand the environment? No. We're reducing the pollution. Yes. The environment is the air and the water and the ocean. And, uh, and the reduce water. the emission. Yes. So how are you going to adapt your product? Um, You're making an electric blanket. Oh, Hmm? Don't know. How about getting the standard of the lowest energy use, right? Each product has a label, especially electronic products, they have a label, right? Score from 1 to 5 on energy use. Uh -huh. We got this idea because uh, our team has already discussed that we're going to lower uh, our products like uh, electricity use. Yes, that makes it more environmentally friendly, right? Okay, so then just to sum up on this part, of it, this is adapting the products for consumers. Mm, we have different cultures, different laws, different regulations, okay, so we need to change our product. Also different income levels, some countries have a quite low GDP. But for example, the cigarette manufacturers, instead of selling the box of 20 cigarettes, they can sell just one cigarette. People don't have enough money to buy 20 cigarettes, but they have enough money to buy one cigarette. Okay? So even though they have a lower GDP, we can still adapt the product or for that, that market. Okay? So uh, the green marketing is getting more important these days. So then let's talk about business to business, products and services for business businesses. We talked about consumers. A lot of people think about marketing, they think just marketing to the consumer, B2C. Well, a lot of businesses don't B2B. We're going to see in a minute. 
right, the US trade figures. Okay? So if we look at this is the major categories of US exports. Services, 36, 32%. Uh, goods, uh, merchandise, goods, 67%. Of the merchandise, industrial supplies, crude oil, plastics, chemicals, metals, 19%. Capital goods, construction equipment, aircraft, computers, telecommunications, 25%. So this is all mainly business to business, and this is a large amount of the exports of the US. Okay? If I'm selling chemicals, I'm not selling directly to the consumer, right? I'm selling the chemical to another business to use the chemical to make their product. Okay? So, it may be you end up working in the company selling business to business. Okay? So, there's a difference uh, between industrial and consumer goods. Okay? Industrial goods are used to make other goods. Consumer goods is the final product. Okay? Consumers are seeking more satisfaction, whereas industrial consumers want to make a profit more so. So in standardization, which do you think is more important? Customizing the goods for consumers or customizing the industrial goods? Which is more important to have? Customization. Consumer goods, yes. Why? Why is customization more important for consumer goods? On a lot of different customers. Yes. For elevate, they can elevate the image of our brand. Okay. Right. In the industrial good, it's not the final product, right? So the industrial buyer is not that worried about getting customized one that much, okay? But the consumer is final product, so they're worried about that, right? They have wide taste. So uh, there's more similarities in customers of industrial goods than consumer goods, okay? Because of the nature of the product, the product is not as complicated, it's simpler. And the motive or intent for the user. The industrial user is interested in profit, right? So standard Standardized product could be cheaper, okay? Whereas the consumer is more interested in the use or the quality. Uh, so, which is usually a bigger gamble? Investing in products or services for industrial markets or consumer markets, and why? Discuss with your partner. Do you understand gamble? Which is more risky? Or which is more risky? If you study financial management, you know that the product type depends on the risk, right? Type of business has different, every type of business has different type of risk, okay? So I'm asking which is more risky generally? Consumer products or industrial products? Okay, so let's have a show of hands. Hands up, who thinks industrial markets is more risky? Who thinks consumer markets is more risky? Who thinks industrial markets is more risky? Okay, just yeah, so industrial markets is more risky than consumer markets, right? Why? Uh, because in the 
economy falls, the, can, the consumer markets starts to buy from the. I mean, yeah. Industrial market supports the consumer market. Yes. 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 No. So, if the economy falls, consumer markets will stop to buy. Yes. And from from that's that is the risk. But <laughs> <laughs> so what happens? The consumer stops buying. The economy goes bad. Yeah. They're buying TVs, let's say, right? You are selling industrial product, right? L to LG. LG is making TV, right? And you are selling semiconductors. Do you understand semiconductor? Yeah. You are selling semiconductors to LG. Okay, so consumers stop buying this type of TV. Okay, let's say we don't, there's a new technology. We don't need this kind of TV anymore. We have a TV you can just see in the air or something like that, right? So, Who's affected more, LG or the semiconductor company? Semiconductor company, right? Like you said, the consumers stop buying. Immediately, LG sees that people are buying less TVs. Immediately, they cut their order of semiconductors, right? But LG still has the TVs in stock, has some TVs in stock, okay? So it doesn't need any more semiconductors because it has some TVs in stock already. So it tells them just ne next year, no semiconductors, okay? But LG is still selling the TVs from its stock. Do you understand? So they have some more time to adapt here. They don't have much time. It's just stopped completely, right? Or another example is the airline industry. There was the, do you know Boeing? Yes. Boeing makes the airplanes. Let's say that we have American Airlines. Okay? So there was 9-11 and the consumer stopped flying. So American Airlines says, oh, I better not order any more airplanes. And all the other airlines said the same thing. Okay? So Boeing, no air, no contracts, no making, no airplanes. Don't need any more airplanes. Okay? Do you understand? So riskier situation for Boeing. American Airlines still has customers, they're still flying, but they don't need any more airplanes. So they don't order any airplanes. It's the same, all of the other airlines don't order airplanes. So Boeing gets affected. Okay, so uh, there are three factors which affect demand in the industrial market differently than the consumer market. Volatility of demand. Demand is more volatile. Volatile means goes up and down. So Boeing, now no planes, right? Market kicks up again. Everybody's ordering planes from Boeing, right? Every airline in the world wants a new plane. Boeing has too much business, right? Then there's a problem again. Okay, volatile. Okay. Uh, the stages of economic development. Uh, different countries are, are in different stages of development. Affects the demand. Technology and market demand. The level of technology. So uh, we can see here the stages of economic development. Traditional, like sub-Saharan Africa. Mainly they're producing raw materials. Stage two. Starting to take off. This is according to Rostal, he's put into five categories. For example, Vietnam. Right? Infrastructure is important business in these countries. Stage three, take off, Eastern Europe. Semi and non durable consumer goods. People start to buy. Can you give me an example of consumer goods? Semi durable consumer goods. lasts for a few years, some consumer good that lasts for a couple of years. What lasts for a couple of years? Cars. Cars, cell phones, okay. Stage four, low cost manufacturing, and stage five, services. So each country is in a different stage of economic development. And if we are selling business to business, it may be that our product is not suitable for these countries some different countries. Uh, if we are selling some semiconductors, what country can we sell semiconductors to? In these stages, which stages of the countries can we sell semiconductors to? 
Can we sell them to the sub-Saharan African country? No. no. Vietnam? No. Maybe not. Okay, so from stage 3 to stage 5. Uh, so, the last one is, uh, the third one is technology and market demand. So, uh, also it depends on the level of education and the use of robot bots. So on. These days, the low cost manufacturing is getting less important because of the technology, right? Countries is using more and more technology for developing things. Uh, these days, China, all of the, you know, Singapore, Korea, they've invested a lot of money in the education. So they're developing their technology and their economies are developing well. Then we have increased competitiveness. So education and technology is linked. So, if the economy doesn't have the technology, it's a little bit like the stages of economic development, they may not be able to use our product, okay? Or we may not be able to sell our business-to-business -business product well there. If they don't understand the technology or they don't have uh, the kind of technology that we need. So, <coughs> the next point is about the global standards. Do you understand global standards? You mentioned before. What is a global standard? What does it mean, stand, something is standard? Is it the same features everywhere? The same everywhere. Standard means the same everywhere, right? Why do we need standards? Why do we need standards? Why do we need global standards? Can you give me an example of a global standard that we need? It's useful. Is the English language is a global standard? It's getting. It's not a standard yet, right? Standard is like official. Okay. Mm. Right? Countries agree. It's agreed by companies and com countries. They meet together, and they develop the standard, and then they. People should use should follow the standard. Okay? If you don't follow the standard, you might not get much business because you're outside the standard. Okay? So an example is wireless technology. Do you understand wireless technology? I use my smartphone in Ireland, in Korea, in the US. Okay? There's a global standard for wireless technology so that people can use their wireless device anywhere in the world. We know the socket for the plug, the plug, plugging socket. It's different in different countries. Okay, but a lot of things we need the standards. Standards are useful because they give standards. They give a minimum, minimum of quality for people. Okay, they can encourage innovation because people can see this is the base. This is the minimum for the, we need for the wireless technology. And then I can make wireless technology. Maybe I didn't know about how to make wireless communication device. But it's all public information in the standard. I can see you need to do this and this. So now I can make the wireless communication device. And then I just add my own part, some innovation, which means that people will buy my product. So it allows for innovation. Companies come together, make standards. Uh, we can have a process or performance standard. Process or performance. Performance means we need to have a certain level or performance. Process means we follow the steps. Everybody follows the same step. Okay. So uh, we can have this helps for quality. So if we have followed the standards and. Uh, the ISO, we'll see in a minute, ISO standard, voluntarily, we can have a better quality. 
The perception of quality rests solely with the customers. For example, the unused functions of the PC. Are you going to buy a PC for $1,000, which has a lot of functions that you don't need? No, no. no, you'll buy the cheap one for $500. Okay? Especially business to business is more practical than the consumer. Right? Business to business, they want to save costs. So they're not going to buy, business is not going to buy the fancy computer that they don't need. They're buying large number in bulk. Business is just going to buy basic one, just performs the basic tasks that they need, and they'll buy in bulk. So, uh, these things uh, help the quality. Do we have good technology? Do we comply with the standards? Do we have good services and follow throughs? Do we have a competitive price? So quality standards vary with the level of the country's industrialization. So Nokia figured that out in, uh, Nokia was too slow to change to the smartphone, right? You know Nokia? They have the old type of cell phone. They thought, they didn't realize that the people wanted, they thought people just wanted to make phone calls with their phone. They didn't realize they want to use the internet and do all the things. Uh, so anyway, they were slow to sell in the developed market countries, but they were successful in Africa. Okay? Because in Africa, the people just wanted to make the phone call. Okay? Maybe the internet connection was not as good, that kind of reasons, right? So they, it went back to the different quality standards. A quality is making the phone call, reliable, very reliable phone call. And easy to make the phone call, right? The Nokia phone is smaller, you have the flip phone. Do you want to go back to using flip phone? But it's very small and yeah, convenient, you know? Some people use the flip phone, right? They think the quality is just it's small and you can call, make the call. So it depends on your levels, uh, the country's technology and industrialization. So we already looked at this market research questionnaire where we ask, when we're doing business to business, we go there and we ask them, why are you choosing our product? What is the quality part of our product? Is the price important? Okay, we find out about these things. <coughs> so, uh, international standards. Uh, we have EU. They make their own standards just for Europe. For example, safety standards for cars. This is like a non-tariff barrier, okay? Your car, your car door needs to be this wide in Europe. But Korean factories make their door this wide, okay? So they have to go and change, change everything. Uh, in Saudi Arabia, uh, they were making a new standard for their electric system. You know electric system? Like the in the wall, plug, plug socket. They were changing their plug socket, and they made a discussion and they invited a lot of countries. But the US didn't go and didn't go to the discussion. So they ended up, they didn't use the US plug system. They used a different one, maybe the UK. They used the UK socket system. So the UK, the US companies lost a lot of money because Saudi Arabia chose the UK system. So the, the companies were sorry. There should have been the government or the trade delegation should have gone to the discussion, but they missed out. So the companies should go to the standard discussions. Okay? Metric system. The USA, they use different metric system. They use ounces instead of kilograms. Okay? They use inches instead of centimeters. This is a problem between NASA and the Russian uh, space when they cooperate. They have the different measurements. Okay? Uh, products can be returned from different countries because they're the wrong size. The US is using the inches they're using the centimeters. So nowadays the US government has changed. US government is now using centimeters like everybody else. But still some other companies in the US are using different, different one. Uh, the ISO 9000 is a quality standard. It's a process standard. Okay? Process standard, it means that we follow these, this system for checking the quality, then we get the standard. So it's like a system. If we have this standard, we can voluntary standards, it affects our stock price, performance of the company, profits. 
So this is just showing that we have a quality control system. So it's a process or system standard. We make this system to check the quality of the products. So for example, we check for the defect. Does the product have a defect or not? Okay, we test the product. Okay, uh, it's voluntary. So this is now a, a marketing tool. If we have this kind of certification, we can put it on our product. Okay, uh, so just if you want to learn more about standards, there is a, I saw there is a course online. Do you know edX? Maybe some of you know edX. Do you know edX? I want to learn about standards, global standards. Okay. So just type in standards in the edX website. And here we have this course. Innovation and competition succeeding through global standards. Okay? So you can take this course online. Maybe you're busy now, but uh, during the summer vacation, right? And study English and also learn about standards and innovation. Okay? It, I think it's good anyway to use these kind of websites. Another one is Coursera. Uh, they have the university courses from the un different universities. You can choose whatever you're interested in. Just search any topic and you can find a course, right? So this is a course about uh, global standards. And in this course, they're explaining why technical standards are important, okay? how they are developed, companies come together, okay? how they help innovation, the connection between standards and business success. So standards, if you're involved in making the standard, okay, and you're following the standard, you can get more success in your business. <coughs> they have a transcript subtitles and so on. So do you have any question about the standards? No? So then we have business services, the service industry for businesses. So for some industrial products the revenue from the services is higher than the revenue for the products. So if we think of do you know photocopying machine or printers? Yeah. Yeah. So we have to fix the printer, or we have to do some service, or uh, sell the toner, other parts, right? For cell phones, they often give the cell phone for free, because you make the contract. Right? You make the contract, so you get, they don't make the profit on the device of the cell phone, they make the product on the extra services, which come from the cell phone. Uh, leasing equipment, like leasing the photocopier, leasing the cars. Uh, services related to the leasing. Uh, we can have services not associated with products like advertising, banking, healthcare, from business to business, professional services. After sale services, uh, so Hyundai has the car presses. Uh, so if we are buying some car press, Hyundai sells, do you understand car press? Car press is a, it presses the metal together to make the door or the design of the car. Okay. So Hyundai sold its car presses to some companies in different countries, but they couldn't. They didn't know how to, to install the car press, or if it broke down, they couldn't fix it. Okay. So they need to provide the after sale service here, training about how to use the product, spare and replacement parts. So we have to think about, again, we can adapt the product. Uh, GE, they sell their medical product all over the world, like oxygen mask, right? Or some equipment for the heart, for the operations, that kind of thing. But hospitals in different countries had a problem. The equipment would break down, and they don't have the money to pay for a new one. It takes a long time for the spare part to come there. Sometimes they can't even afford to pay for the new part. So they have the equipment in the hospital and they just don't use it. They paid a lot of money, but they don't have enough money now to pay for the extra parts. So they have to adapt their product for the different country. 
okay? The faraway country or lower GDP country. Simpler product that's easy to fix, okay? Easy to refix, doesn't need many spare parts. Maybe sell included, sell some spare parts when we're selling it together. <coughs> so, also the service personnel, can they reach easily? So this, it can be more profitable than the actual sale of the machinery or, or the product. But perhaps more so in business to business than the consumer industry, it's more important for building the customer loyalty to provide the service to those uh, other businesses. So other business services, we have uh, client followers. So for example, the US law firm. So it means that they just follow their clients. Their client goes to a different country to do business. The law firm comes and sets up their office in that country. Okay? Uh, <coughs> we discussed these points already. So then, just a final point about the business to business is the trade shows and relationship. So in business to business, relationships are more important than business to consumer, right? One way of making relationships is going to the trade show. Do you understand trade show? Have you ever been to a trade show? Have you ever been to a trade show? Maybe not? No. What is a trade show? Yes, so everybody has their own booth, we call it booth, and they showcase their products. So big trade fairs we can think of in Germany, they have every year a big electronics trade fair where people look at all the new electronics, right? We have for cars, okay, for TVs, for different, for furniture. They all have the trade fair. And what happens is you go there with your product and people, industrial consumers or wholesalers come to the trade fair and they decide, oh, I like your product, I'm going to use that for my manufacturing or I'm going to sell that in my shop, okay? That kind of way. So trade fairs is important. It depends on the culture. In Europe, the trade show is very important, right? Uh, if you work in the business-to-business -business company later, you will have to go to the trade fair, either to, to demonstrate your product, try to sell your product, or just to see the trend. What's the trend in the business, okay? Or even to buy the product. What's the best product to buy? So this is a, it's a, it's a way of marketing too. Okay. Uh, for business to business, trade show can be a very important vehicle in many countries. In Europe, it can be the most important way. Okay. Europeans spend 22% of their budget on trade shows. Americans spend just 5%. Why? It's cultural. From hundreds of years ago, Europeans used to have trade fairs and trade shows for hundreds of years. Okay. So. It's just a kind of cultural thing, important in Europe. So trade shows provide the facilities for the manufacturer to show and demonstrate their product. So you can come and see the product. Of course, you can send them an email, send them pictures of your product and so on. But the trade fair allows them to try out your product and compare it against similar products. Okay? They can view the competitors' products at the same time. We can create sales and establish relationships with the agent, distributor, franchisers, and suppliers. So if we go to the trade show, do we just go there and just stand by ourselves in the corner <laughs> for two days? All right. Somebody says hello and we say, <laughs> like that? Hmm? Is that what you do at the trade show? No, right? You have to go there and you have to be outgoing, right? Meet people, make an effort to meet people, excuse me, sir, right? So on, excuse me, ma'am, right? Uh, and most other people at the trade show is in the same mentality, right? They're there to meet people, make a network, and make relationships. So uh, these days also we have online trade shows. We can look at one in the next class. We're using the computer room, okay? It's cheaper. To, they just, the on, we look at the website of the online trade show, okay? It just shows your products. It's like a virtual booth, virtual booth. But it's not as good as a normal trade show. 
So trade shows, it's not a matter just of selling the right product, but we should always change our product and innovate and improve our product. We could have a very easy job in our company. We're selling semiconductors. My job is great. I go to the trade fair and it's really easy. We have the best product. What happens next year? Taiwanese or Chinese company makes better technology and much cheaper, right? Oh no, I can't sell any of my product now. Okay? So we have to continuously we have to continuously change the product and change the technology and keep trying to keep ahead. Uh, the relationship marketing is important for business to business. In, in Asia, relationship is more important than Europe or the US, right? So you guys are familiar with relationships, okay? Uh, because if you have, we have the relationship, I trust you. And relationship is one way to sell your company. To, if somebody you're doing business with is thinking of changing, right? They tell you, oh, I found a Chinese semiconductor company. They're, product is just as good and it's a cheaper price. Right? What are you going to say? I meet you at the trade fair this year and I say, I know I bought from you last year, but this year Chinese company has the same product and cheaper price. What are you going to say to me? We have a relationship. We've been doing business for five years. What are you going to say? Okay, then buy from the Chinese company. I don't care. <laughs> I'll just quit and get a job in another company. <laughs> what are you going to say then? Anybody, what are you going to tell me? We already started to develop new technologies. It's not true, you don't know about it. You're not starting to develop new technologies. You just have the same one. Hmm? It's a good idea. Would you say that if it's not true? Yes. What? <laughs> but then we will start to do it's this. It's not going to work in the long term, right? I'm going to find out after a few months. Hmm? Is there a better discount? You have to stress the relationship. You have to say, well, look, you know me, right? We've been doing business for five years. You asked, remember last year you asked me to change the color, and I changed the color just quickly. I always deliver on time. Okay? We can adapt to things. But you don't know that company. They could deliver late, their product could be faulty. Okay? They might not, if you ask them to help you, they might not help you, okay? So you have to stretch your relationship with the other person, okay? But you're saying sometimes it doesn't work even on hmm? And uh, if, uh, like some, uh, where some companies, they really want to lower their cost, um, yes. I think they would just seek for cheaper uh, manufacturers. Yes, it might work, but that's, I'm saying, that's what you have to try, try right? First, we just work with them, but I prefer to do business with Japanese people. They really value uh, relationship and friendship. Yes, in Japan, and create a relationship and friendship. So they're not going to change quickly in Japan, just because the new company comes with a new price, right? So, uh, in the U.S., it's different culture. In the U.S., they might change quickly. If a new customer comes with a lower price, they might change. Right, different culture. Uh, maybe some of the companies change. Like, do you know the car companies in the U.S. like GM? Yeah. They used to have a competition among their suppliers, and they would ask them to put the price in the envelope. What's your price? They had a secret auction. Right. Each of the companies needs to put their price in the envelope secretly. GM is going to open all the envelopes and choose the one with the best price. Right. And then if you don't have a good price next year, somebody has a lower price, they change to another company. But Toyota, on the other hand, they work together with the suppliers. They keep the same supplier and they send their engineers to the supplier's factory and they try to coach them. Toyota has some good manufacturing way, they teach them the manufacturing way. Okay? And they help their suppliers and they make a long term relationship. So it's a different culture, different way of doing business, right? In that case, the US car companies are, are trying to change a little bit to the Japanese way. Because they realized that they should be trying to help their suppliers a little bit more. Okay? But in other cases, it can be on the other way. But that's, we need to use our relationship to differentiate ourselves from our competitors, okay? Do you understand what I mean? We, ha we, we have the good relationship, you can trust me. That's what makes me different from the other people. Okay? We can use the internet to facilitate relationship building and maintenance. Uh, so, 
Uh, we can send emails for the person's birthdays. We can make links on LinkedIn, right? Uh, these days we can find different ways to manage the relationship. So discuss with your partner. How do you think you can make a good relationship with the business to business customer? Your Korean students, right? Chinese students, you should be good at knowing how to make a relationship. So discuss with your partner. How can you make a good relationship with your business to business customer? semiconductors, right? Yeah. You're a Korean semiconductor company and I'm an, from the UK, I'm your customer. How are you going to make a good relationship with me that I don't change? To the Next year you can see that Taiwanese company is making cheaper semiconductors. You want to make a good relationship. How are you going to make a good relationship? Okay, so you show me your company's credit situation, that your company is not going to be in trouble, right? Reputable company. Okay, any other ideas? Anybody else? Anybody else have any other ideas for creating the relationships? You should know better than me, you are Asian students. Hmm? Giving gifts, do I have to tell you? Giving gifts? Hmm? That's the one thing I have to learn in Korea, I have to learn how to give gifts to people. Hmm? Some people in the soccer team gave me some gift of gloves or something like that, but I never give any gift to anybody. Right? <laughs> because I'm Westerner and I'm not used to giving gifts. So I'm not that good at making the relationship, so you guys should be better, right? So that kind of thing, giving gifts, right? Remembering people's birthdays, remembering facts about the people, their families, asking about their family, those kind of things, okay? Uh, just, that's just making kind of personal relationship, but on the business, we can build a trust by doing the things well, doing things on time, responding to their complaints quickly, right? Dealing with their problems quickly. Then when they, they are talking about changing to another person, you can have the evidence, right? You can trust me. Do you understand? Trust, because I did this, and I did this, and I did this well, and properly, and on time, okay? So just over time, we can develop the relationship and show an interest in the person. So do you have any questions then about uh, this part, business to business? No. No? Okay, so uh, then let's just call the, I forgot the hand around, just call the attendance, we can finish there.